White line, trout line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread and mustard greens, that's how we live and it sure feels fine. Well, you can't change us, that's the way we know. Cajun people live like they did long ago. So join the fun, live off the land, cause there ain't nothing better than a Louisiana man. Trap line sitting on a pipeline waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread, mustard greens. That's how we live, and it sure feels fine. Hey everybody, welcome to Cajun Living and Cooking. My name's Rodney Dupree, and today we got a treat for y'all. As a matter of fact, we got a trick or treat for y'all. We're out in Hester, Louisiana at Cousin Larry's house. That's Larry Roussel. We're out by the levee on the Mississippi River. Larry's cooking a gumbo. We got fried fish. We got some neat concoctions. We got a whole bunch of trick-or-treaters coming up. Y'all stay tuned. Cajun Living and Cooking's fixing to start right about now. All right, y'all, here we are with Cousin Larry. Larry Roussel. Hey, Rodney, good to be with you again, my boy. Man, nice <laughs> to be here. I didn't know you had such a neat place out here living out on the levee on the oh, river. Yeah, we, we call river rats in this area. Hester, we love Halloween and, and Belmont and Hester. And it's not so much about the kids, it's about the adults too. Right? The oh, kids yeah. are gonna get their treats, but the adults are gonna have a good time too. So this is the calm before the storm. Well, yeah, you might say, boy, that's a big pot for nobody out here. <laughs> but we'll see how well I estimate this crowd is coming tonight. So he's working on the gumbo, y'all, but I thought uh, when you make a gumbo, you start with root. Well, in South Louisiana, they always said, first you make a root and make a gumbo, but that's not necessarily true. There's a it, People say think outside the box, but in this case, we're gonna think outside the pot. <laughs> this is a 30 gallon pot, and we're gonna do roughly 24 gallons of gumbo, a little wow. bit over. But what we're gonna do in this pot right here, first thing I do is uh, heat the oil up. Yeah. All or whatever you wanna use. Then I put onions, the caramelized onions, and they're there at that point at this time. Then we're gonna add one to flour. Uh huh. So that's gonna be our thickening agent. And then from that point, we're gonna add water, then on do it, then chicken. My Uncle Larry seasoning and flavor enhancer, and we're gonna be done. Man, we'll bouquet for color. that's the first time I ever seen one like this, but I've tasted your gumbo before, so I know how the finished product is. Thank you, Roger. Thank and, you. And we've got some guys coming to fry some fish later. Yeah, we got from Chalmette, Chef Chenois Chardonnay, other known as Rickerson, Jason Rickerson, my good buddy. He's gonna fry <laughs> the fish, okay? All right. All right, y'all, this is unique gumbo going right here. It's a different, it's gonna be different, but I'm gonna. I'm going to ask you to do this for your wonderful viewers out there, Rodney. Uh -huh. When you taste that gumbo, you give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And it don't, whatever you think in your heart, you tell me yes or no, okay? So that's where we had it with us, y'all. It's either going to be good or it's going to be no good. Wait, can I repeat that? It's going to be great or it's going to be terrible. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm going to let you get back to cooking, and we're going to see these next steps coming up. Exactly. All right, Larry, we're going to step three. What's next? Well, first of all, what's next is I picked up a lovely assistant, my neighbor, Lynette. All, all right. Grandpa. So Lynette's going to start handing me the wonderful flour. Step three, the first thing was the oil. Then we put the oranges. Now we're putting the flour. And all we're going to do right here is heat the flour up. Because step four is going to come in just a minute or two after that. And that's it. That's step three. The flour's and in there. And the flour. And the flour is actually going to be the thickening agent for the gumbo. That's it. Not no color, nothing else, just the thickening agent. Okay. okay. So we're going to heat that up good. And then we're going to put the water in. 12 gallons of water for this particular size gumbo. All right, y'all. We're getting there. This is, the, this is another way to make gumbo. All right, y'all. We're moving into the step four. step four. Now, step four, we can do whatever you want. You can put the water next or... In this case today, we're going to put the on do it. It's a, it looks like some quality meat. Veron's on do it, okay? That's my favorite on do it. Veron's on do it. Already cut. Already cut up, ready to go. So we're putting that in. How many pounds on do are you putting in we're there? We're putting 30 pounds. Wow. 30 pounds on do it. So having 30 pounds on do it, we're going to end up with, we, our goal is to have 26 gallons. 26, 20, gallons, 26 of gallons of gumbo in here. 30 gallon pot. That's, that's our goal. We're going to have. That's some good looking meat, I'm gonna tell you. I've seen that's a lot a, of andouille, but that's, that's, that's it looks like ham. Stuff. That's an excellent product, all right, I love it. When you talk to people about what's the key to a good gumbo, most people will tell you having quality meat in it. Oh, I agree with that, I agree. 
flavor. And that's yeah. one of the things you want to do. And I'm going to tell y'all what, that's some pretty meat in there. We're going to get the camera close up on there where you can see that. All right. And, the, and your flower has now turned some color. Being now, in that all because of the caramelization of the onions and the flour browning just a little bit. Now we actually did a little bit longer than I normally would because I had to get the andouille, which is no big deal. So now what we're gonna do? We're gonna let the andouille cook a little while. Just heat it up. One, Lynette, my my lovely assistant is doing a wonderful job, by the way. Oh, is she? How'd you get uh, How'd you get involved into the store? And you just drove up, huh? I just drove up. <laughs> Gotcha. Well, I'll come and check on tonight's plans. And, gotcha. And, uh, We're gonna have plenty of people and plenty of trick or treaters as we go. I'm his official taste tester. Okay, oh. somehow I could tell when Larry's cooking something, and I just drive, and then he's, oh, come taste, come taste. That's because so, you live yeah. downwind. You can <laughs> yeah. smell it at your house whenever he's cooking. But she's also a wonderful cook too, though. All Don't right. Don't have a BS, right? She's a very good cook. Gotcha. But one thing we're gonna talk about after a while is my seasoning. But I'm gonna let Lynette tell you, her daughter Lacey just got married. And Lynette, tell him what y'all gave oh, for the uh, okay. guests that came yeah. to the wedding. She was marrying a little fella from Arkansas, and we had some, you know, friends and family coming down from Arkansas. So what we did, Larry, I don't want to stick you on Dewey down here, uh -huh. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> so y'all brought yeah. the seasoning? We, we, we uh, bought some seasoning from Larry. It was Uncle Larry seasoning. We labeled it with Lacey and Jeff and um, their date, September, well, I don't know what is in September. Uh -huh. And we put packed by Uncle Larry and we had a taste test. And as a favor, when they left, they had some seasoning that they was able to take. So when Uncle Larry get ready to market his, his, his seasonings, it's already been it, sent. It is already throughout the state of Louisiana and Arkansas. It's in, in the boot. Okay. So the seed has been planted uh, up north. The seed has exactly. been planted, yep. Exactly. And it has Uncle Larry, you know, find Uncle Larry and there's the seasoning. Okay, so we're going to let this brown a little while. We're going to just actually cook it down when, when the andouille heats up. Then we're going to step five. And step five is going to be the water. We're just going to put the water in. And step six is coming right after that. And I'm going to show you that after all. Because, uh, Again, this is a different kind of gumbo, right? They're different from what most people, they probably out there right now, especially from the Cajun country. That's not a gumbo, but yeah. it is, y'all. It is a gumbo. But what I do, just to give you an idea how to use my seasoning, we're going to use 12 gallons of water. We used uh, 12 cups of flour, 12 gallons of water. And then to season it and flavor it right, we're going to use six cups of my seasoning. All right. 12 gallons, six cups. Okay, that's how I figure it out. All right, y'all. You're going to say, uh, bon or? Bon or pa bon? <laughs> bon or pa, good or bad? <laughs> okay, y'all. Oh, we're on it. We good, it. bad, and ugly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. We got another step going. We fixing to add some more stuff to the pot. Y'all hang on. All right, Larry. We ready to put the secret seasoning? This is Uncle Larry's seasoning and flavor enhancer. It's going to be available very soon. All right, about six weeks. It's going to be available in this size container. Now, if it's not in your grocery store, demand your grocery store to carry it. Tell them you don't carry Uncle Larry, I don't shop in your store no more. All right, that's <laughs> what we talk about. But anyway, we're doing this right now, Rodney. And this is, I want to say my gumbo's down to a sign, but you're going to tell it to the audience later on. But what we did, 12 gallons of water, we're using six cups of my seasoning. And here it is, six cups. And we still got my lovely assistant stirring. Stirring, man. She's so doing a well. fine job. She is doing a wonderful, wonderful job. So that's it. Now we're going to bring this gumbo to a boil. When we hit a boiling point, then we're going to put the last ingredient. Well, two more, two more ingredients. Two to more. Come in. The kitchen bouquet to give us color. Give uh -huh. us gumbo color. You can get Leslie to check that out after a while. Okay. We have no color. If you're dreaming of white Christmas, this is a white gumbo right now. <laughs> but but put the good. bouquet for the cup. Good. You can take a, take, a, take a spoon in this. Close room. your eyes, you'll never oh, know. And it's the bouquet, and what's the other one? The other one's going to be oh. all the chicken thighs. We did, we did uh, 30 pounds of sausage, so we're doing 60 pounds of boneless chicken thighs. Wow. All right. We're going to have a full pot. <laughs> we're going to have, we're going to be right at 24, 25 gallons. Actually, probably a little, <clears throat> excuse me, a little over 25 gallons. With the oil that we're gonna we're gonna render gotcha. from the chicken, the sausage, and that we put in from the cooking oil. But all right, y'all, we got just about everything in there. We're bringing it to a ball. You're gonna see what's next. Hey, everybody! It's time for the St. Jude Mardi Gras boat parade. Yes, Mardi Gras is early this year. The parade is January 30th. It starts at 12 noon. The parade will start at Canal Bank on the Diversion Canal, goes through the weir, and continues down the river to Manny's Bar. And that's where the fun really gets started, with plenty of food, band, and a live auction. And this year's Grand Marshal is Whitney Van. 
So come on out this year and help support a great cause, the St. Jude Kids. If you would like to enter or to donate, call 225-939-2135. Miss D's Sweet Sensations is a wholesale sweet shop located in Santa Mall, Louisiana. The business is locally owned and operated by Diane Bro, now with 12 delicious varieties to choose from. You can find Mrs. D's Sweet Sensations in all of your local supermarkets and convenience stores. Made fresh daily by six full-time employees right here in Ascension Parish. Hey, store owners, restaurants, and caterers, if you're not selling Mrs. D's Sweet Sensations, you're not selling the best product on the market. Junior's Meat Market has everything you need when you're going to the camp, tailgating, or planning dinner. We make our own cracklings, beef jerky, whole cut cheese, and sausage right here in the store. We also process deer and hogs. Junior's Meat Market has an abundance of groceries and frozen items, which include crab cakes, fried oysters, tilapia, and more. We have daily meat specials, and we cook plate lunches every other weekend. Stop by Junior's Meat Market today and bring home dinner. RP Custom Trailers and Service is a fully stocked store for RV parts and accessories. With essentials such as tank treatments, hoses, lenses, vents, power cords, cleaning supplies, and everything else your camper may need. Known for customized living quarters and horse trailers for over 18 years. We now specialize in RV insurance work. Talk to Ryan about how to prevent blowouts and oh yes. That leaky vinyl or rubber roof can be inspected and repaired also. Call or come by and see it all at RP Custom Trailers. All right, Larry, we got to cook some rice. Yeah, we got to cook rice. Now, for the gumbo, we got, we got roughly 25 gallons, so we need a lot of rice. Okay. And you always just kind of estimate on that, but the rice comes in 25-pound bo boxes, so that's what we're going to do, 25 pounds. Probably going to add some extra, but I'm always wanting more than not enough, right? Right, right. And you can always freeze that after if you want to. So how much water you need for so 20? So what we're going to do, 25 pounds of, uh, of rice, we're going to use 5 gallons of water. Because based on the Gonzalez Jambalaya Association, the way they, they figure out a jambalaya, for every 5 pounds of rice, 1 gallon of water. Same principle with uh, just cooking rice. Okay. But uh, we got my a new assistant, my, my good buddy, <laughs> Louis Ramos. Louis. The general manager at Blue Runner Foods, he can help because when we do the Crescent City Classic, we do, uh, we do, I want to say 75 pounds of rice is what we do to go with the red beans. That meanwhile, we do jumble off of 1, 000, uh, 13,000 people. Yeah, right? feeding 20,000. Amazing amounts of yes. stuff. So, Lewis got it well, down to a science, so you got a good assistant here. A wonderful assistant. We got the man himself from uh, Blue Runner Foods, all right? Here we go. So, we got the water in. So, just tell us the whole process. We're going to put right. the water in. We're going to bring it to a boil. Uh huh. When we hit a boil point, 25 pounds of, of rice, bring it to another boil. When the rice starts coming to the top, and you can see a few, you know, grains of rice, put the lid on it, cut it down to very minimum. You could actually turn it off with yeah, a big, yeah. thick pot like this, turn it off. 15, 20 minutes later, you give it a fluff. 30 minutes after you, you turn that burn off, you are ready to serve. Awesome. All right, y'all, cooking rice in the black iron pot. You're going to see it. All right, Larry, came to a ball. You yep. put the kitchen bouquet in? Yep. Is that it or what we? Well, one last step. After the chicken absorbs the juice and the andouille absorbs the juice, sinks to the bottom, we're going to skim the grease. Gumbo is going to be ready to be served, but we also, let's look at our rice. How wonderful that looks too now. Oh, how you like that? That looks good. White rice in a black iron pot. In a pot. black iron pot. Oh, there it is. We almost close to eating. Now you said the, the meat will sink? The meat will absorb that juice and sink. That's when gumbo's at its best. Not necessarily the next day. Once that meat absorbs that juice and the, the seasoning, the Uncle Larry's seasoning and flavor enhancing. There it is. There it is, y'all. All right, y'all. We're going to let it sit. We're going to skim it. We're going to get to taste some here in a minute. All right, y'all. We had a couple visitors come by, and he had to scoop up some for some people that can't stay. But Exactly. We're going to get to taste some in a minute, but we want to tell you more about his seasoning. Yeah. My seasoning, y'all, is, is different from the rest. Finally got a Cajun seasoning that's different from the rest. And I tell people, and I'm not just telling you this to be lying. This is the truth. This is not just a seasoning that enhances the flavor. And that's the biggest difference. So the price of mine is going to be more money in the grocery store. I know it will because of the ingredients I put up in it. But I want y'all at least try it one time 
And I guarantee you're going to do just like Mikey. You're going to like it. Mikey <laughs> like it, you're going to like it. I've tried it, y'all. It's, it's different than what's out there. And yeah. It, to pay a little more to have that flavor, you're going to want to do it. I agree. I agree. 100%. But I'm proud of this product. And that's what I told somebody a while back. What if somebody comes up with something different? Because they're all basically the same. Everybody yeah. does it a little bit different. But yeah. this in here enhances the flavor. So you're going to taste test it after a while. I'll yeah. Say. 25 gallons of gumbo <laughs> is ready. So we're going to get to taste some gumbo in a minute. Yes. And we're fixing to fry some fish here in a little we're bit. Gonna, when Chef Shinwa Chardonnay appears, we're going to do it. Y'all hang on. It's going to get better. All right, here we go, Larry. We got some really neat juices you got here. We got all kind of good vampire blood, which is brewed warlock wash and homemade pumpkin, pumpkin juice taken from our neighbor's garden at midnight last night. And unfortunately, he's looking for his pumpkins right now, but I told him I didn't see him. We ain't seen it. No. That juice didn't come from there. Right, no. And then it's the witch's brew. It's pretty famous, huh? It's very famous because it's made from all the prominent witches in Hester. Yeah. And gotcha. then more more famous than that is the warlock wash. Yeah. They like that wash because if you know the witches in Hester, you know why the warlocks like that wash. <laughs> all right. Then, of course, we got the vampire blood, and it's imported with the youngest vampires in Transylvania, okay? Gotcha, gotcha. No, so you're going to serve them all a little? Yes, all right. First customer, customer number one. The red one? The vampire blood. All right, vampire blood is in the lead. Vampire blood. All right, customer number two. Vampire blood on the first one. We're going to see how she likes it. Is it good? Yes. <laughs> she liked it. And, and and what's your costume, a little cat? Cardoon. Oh. Ah. All right, how is it? Good. It's good? And you are the hippie girl? Mm hmm All right. What are they going with? All right, this is the uh, witch's, witch's brew. brew. Witch's brew. That's for Tyler. Let him try it out. All right, here comes Tyler. Good? Uh-huh. All right. All right, Brooklyn. What's she? Witch's, witch's brew. brew. Witch's brew is getting popular. <laughs> Have you had this before? No, no, no. 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 Now I hear you. I hear you make these brews every year. Oh yes, we do every year. Now they try different things every year too. You know, not necessarily try the same thing. But Bela. Okay. What you want? All right, which is brew for the which blue. Is brew. And she's getting dressed in blue too, all right? Oh, that goes with it. You always gotta have that. Goes with the costume. You spill some on you, all right? Yeah, they would never know. All right, Superwoman. Would you like another drink, Superwoman? How is it? Is it good? Yeah. It is? All right. Well, pumpkin juice. Pumpkin, that's my girl, pumpkin juice. Pumpkin this juice. is my favorite, the pumpkin juice. Yeah, it come from the neighbor. Yeah. The neighbor's pumpkin yeah, batch. Right here, listen <laughs> oh, not that neighbor. <laughs> not that neighbor. All right. Next. How is it? Good. It's good. They loving this juice, Larry. Oh, yeah, it's famous. All right. What color? She's going with, she's a doctor or a nurse. She's a nurse. Blue. Blue. Blue for the doctor. You want the witch's brew for the blue. Very popular, very popular with the kids. All right, we have one more customer on in, one lovely customer on in. We're going to right. find out what she wants. What flavor would you like? What color? Oh, she wants the pumpkin. Pumpkin. Juice. That's, uh. That's, That's not the neighbor's daughter, huh? Still on his guard. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's gone, so we have to worry about him. No okay. <laughs> we'll be right back after a few words from our sponsors. River Rats Bar and Grill, an oasis on the A Meat River, located in French Settlement off Highway 16. Hashtag best place to eat and party. With amazingly delicious original and traditional food. Indoor and outdoor seating with a friendly and entertaining staff. Open seven days a week with happy hour Monday through Friday and game day specials. So come by car, bike, or boat. You won't forget the fun times you've had at River Rats Bar and Grill. Lamar Dixon Expo Center, the crown jewel of Ascension Parish, supporting community development and charitable organizations. The center offers a wide variety of activities such as outside show arenas, fully equipped barns, a newly renovated 4-H building, and a Cadence-style chapel, 
RV parking with bathhouses, and large and small Mom, banquet rooms, no. just to name a few. Located in Gonzales, and surrounded by hotels, restaurants, and great shopping venues. Come enjoy what Lamar Dixon Expo Center has to offer. Dreams Come True of Louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to Louisiana children between ages 3 and 18 with a life threatening illness. Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. Dreams Come True provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information. DCTOFLA.com Hole in the Wall Seafood and Cajun Meats now has more to offer. The same high quality seafood, live and bald crawfish, crabs, sack oysters, frog legs, shrimp, gator meat, gar balls, and local catfish just to name a few. Now selling your favorite smokehouse products. Homemade sausage and andouille, beef jerky, stuffed pork chops and chickens, fried boudin balls, cracklings, and much more. Now processing your deer and hogs. And come check out our new seating area. Galvez Hardware and Outdoor Cooking is two unique stores in one. The hardware department has everything you need to fix stuff right. The outdoor cooking section cannot be beaten. We have all the latest and greatest gadgets on the market. But also, we keep a large stock of the tried and tested cookware we've all come to love over the years. Coffee and biscuits every morning during the week, cooking demos on Saturdays, and customer service that will help you get the job done. All right, y'all, we got something that uh, I think's new this year. We got the smoke zombie fingers, and uh, they're wrapped in Slim Jim wrappers, so you don't know what they are. So you're going to taste them and see if you can tell the Slim Jim from the smoke zombie fingers. So right. try one. Is that, that, that's the Slim Jim, huh? No, that's the zombie finger. Oh, and they're so hard to tell apart. Try the other one. You'll, you'll, zombie finger? Definitely a Slim Jim. <laughs> you can tell it right here. You never know. <laughs> All right, y'all. I found a happy table over here. They uh eating Larry's gumbo. Let's get their names and where they from. Neil Poche from Hester, Louisiana. Trudy Canaggio from Hester, Louisiana. Pete Champagne from Port Vincent, Louisiana. Dinah Champagne from Port Vincent, Louisiana. How's that gumbo? Awesome. Delicious. Have you uh, ever had better gumbo than this? Uh, it'd be hard to say. Gotcha, gotcha. Hard to beat. Hard to beat? Now, what y'all thinking on the gumbo? Uncle Larry's got it down pat. Yeah? <laughs> yes. I really like the amount of meat he puts in there yeah. with the sausage yeah. and the chicken. And, the, and seasoning. The, the seasoning and the rice is just is wonderful. Very good gumbo. You heard it right here, y'all. Eating the gumbo up. All right, y'all, we got some more folks here coming to try the gumbo. Let's get their names and where they're from. Katie Nicole Roussel, and I'm from Hester, Louisiana. I'm Alex Ramsey. I'm from Mississippi. Cool. How's the gumbo? It is amazing. Uncle Larry's gumbo is my favorite. He, he, it's something about that seasoning that he's cooking something really good. I mean, it's, it's they I'm say I'm pretty sure he uses seasoning, his own oh, personal yeah. seasoning. Oh, yeah. It's really good. So y'all liking it? Really good. Good stuff? Yeah. Cool. This is one of my favorite gumbos. I love it. All right. Well, thank y'all for uh, stopping and saying a word. Thank you. All right, y'all, we not only have gumbo, we have all kinds of food here. I've got another taste tester. Let's get her name and where she's from. Lisa from New Jersey. That's right down the road. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> not too far. <laughs> now, now Miss Mary Ann made some of these deviled eggs. Yeah. And how are they? They're delicious. Like nothing I've had up in Jersey, so they're really good. <laughs> there's, there's ham and cheese in the deviled egg, y'all. Mm -hmm. Priceless. So I'm going to find them before they eat them all. <laughs> yeah, you better get them because they're almost gone. So. <laughs> all right, Larry. Let's talk. Let's talk. Right now we have the famous chef from Chalmette, Chinois Chardonnay. All right. All right. That's French. He, 
It's all kind of French words, doesn't it? <laughs> but no, Jason's my buddy, but I, just, I call it his stage name when he fried. Oh, when we do the event, I get in the fried gotcha, fish. Gotcha. But Jason, you will agree the secret to your frying fish is all clear is what? Fish fried? Fish frying seasoning. There you go, baby. So that's what we're doing. We, and that's all. Just all clear. All we do is dip the fish in a, in a fish fry right in a Right in the grease. Right now, in the grease. Now, this is something that's going to be coming out soon, too. That's going to be one of the lines that's going to come out a little bit later after the season hits the market. I hope to have a variety of products. Gotcha. My seasoning blend, Uncle Larry seasoning and flavor enhancer, dry rub, fish fry, shrimp fry. We're going to have maybe tortoise sauce. I don't know. Ah. That, but we're going to have stew in a few and ready set gumbo and ready set gumbo with okra. Awesome. If it's anything like your season, I know it's going to be good. But I hope it is, Rod. And let me ask you this. You've been talking to people tonight. Tell your viewers what they've been saying about the gumbo. Y'all, best gumbo this side of Europe. <laughs> <laughs> that's my boy. That's what, so that's what we talk about. It's, you can do gumbos different ways. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, it, and um, my season is one of the keys to it. But Shenwa, you ready to take that batch out? We fixing to pull some fish out. We pull some fish out. Get it. Get, and we're we, gonna let some taste testing go on. We're gonna have some taste test. We'll let it cool just a minute. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, we're out. We gotta put some paper towels on our plate, and we're ready to go. All right. All right. All right, y'all. We got some of the fish done. Uh, we got a sampler here, so let's get his name and where he's from. I'm Robbie Poulchet from Hester, Louisiana, and he's fixing to try Uncle Larry's fish fry. It looks so good and crispy. It looks like it's well done, man. He's giving it at the taste test, and I tell you what, that's right. Is that it? is done right, yes sir. Bruh. Nice and flaky, can't get no better. Just his That's seasoning good. and fish and drop it in all. Hell of a deal, hell of a deal. Cool. All right, Larry, what a what a night, what a day, what a night, bro. Y'all have an awesome community here. Yeah, I think we do too, Rodney. You know, people say, all of them from Belmont, Heston, no, but they all lived here at one time. They grew up here. And they, they come back home for Halloween. That's what we all about, all right? There must have been 300, 400 people here. Uh, somewhere around there, I would agree with that. And I don't really know, but here's one of our trick or treaters right here. All right. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I love this I love this night. One of my favorite holidays. And it's an opportunity to, to see family and friends. And we got to put your seasoning out there. Yeah, and I want all you wonderful viewers, once again, this is my product coming out real soon. It's going to be a little bit more expensive than the rest of the products on the market because it is different. I promise you that. Try it one good. time. It's very good, Rod. And I, I tell you, you heard some of the compliments. Yeah. It's not about the gumbo. It's about the seasoning that goes in it and flavor enhances it. And it, it really enhances the flavor. I promise you that. And it helps. I tell you what, from what we did with the fish, what we did with the gumbo, and everybody tasting this, they keep coming back every year because it's good. Yeah, I, I, I would say the gumbo is part of that part of that uh, process, but the, the big part of it is just unity. Everybody loves to come back to Belmont. Let me just rephrase that. Froggy Mo, Froggy Belmont, Mo. Hester, and Wellam, all right? That's our community. Awesome. So, and it's all about 30 feet long. <laughs> That's our community. <laughs> well, I had a good time. I want to thank you. Thank you. We had good food. A good time, good people, and I want to thank y'all for watching Cajun Living and Cooking.